Mercedes-Benz Stars and Cars 2015 was going to be a phenomenal event in the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Stuttgart. First to show on track, it was going to be Hamilton and Hakkinen and the uh, preparations already getting underway. The first cars we were going to see out on track, these awesome uh, Mercedes-Benz cars that would take part, the AMG A45 in the first heats that we were going to see to find out who would become the Stars and Cars 2015 champion. So up first of all, it was Mika Hakkinen and Lewis Hamilton, two absolute legends in the world of uh, Formula One. Slight difference in ages, of course. That mattered not when it came to the competition because, boy, these guys were going to put on a show and do their level, level best. Of course, Hamilton having the uh, slight advantage of uh, age on his side, but Mika Hakkinen has lost none of his aggression and none of his desire to be a winner as well. Interestingly, the two were joking before they went out on track, trying, trying to out -psych each other. And on track, you can see just how close it was going to be between the two of them. So Mika Hakkinen and Lewis Hamilton. And Lewis Hamilton showing Mika Hakkinen a clean pair of heels, but it was only five tenths or so. And in the uh, second part of this heat, that could be made up. There's no question about that. This track designed and created by Herman Tilke specifically for the Stars and Cars event was going to throw some interesting battles together during the course of the evening. And this, the very first of those to show. Lewis Hamilton versus Mika Hakkinen out there on track in these uh, Mercedes AMG A45 formatic cars. Each and every driver that was uh, taking part used these to begin. And Lewis Hamilton laid down the gauntlet straight away. Pretty happy with the victory and celebrated with some donuts. Lewis won. What do you say? Ah, oh, it was amazing. It was such a great fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good fun, you know. But the gentleman is gentleman. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. But that was pretty tight, wasn't it? Did you think it would be that tight? Oh, oh my God. It was really good fun um, and such a privilege to, to, to be racing up against Mika, you know, a complete legend in the sport. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so you're looking forward to the next round then? I am. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that, so. Are you serious? <laughs> he said he'd been training. <laughs> well, you were practice. training. I had to practice more, you know. He's a three times world champion, only twice. You had some time to practice. So how was it like to drive in the arena for the first time? It was quite tight and I enjoyed it and now I'm looking forward to the race. Okay, do you think you stand a chance against Nico Rosberg? What are we are going to see? Okay, my first interview with you was fun. So we're going to see how the first race is going to be with you here. And so Mick Schumacher then, who's had a stellar year in ADAC Formula 4, was pitted up against Nico Rosberg. And uh, the reason for the two showing together is because that's what the fans voted. Of course, the fans decided uh, before the event who would be pitted up against who. And Mick Schumacher was certainly determined to do his level best out on track. Once again, the cars being used, the uh, Mercedes AMG A45 formatics. So Nico Rosberg and Mick Schumacher. Mick Schumacher in... Uh, his single-seater season this year, his very first single-seater season, having come up from carts and he's thrown straight into the spotlight as Gary Paffett, Pascal Fairline and Toto Wolff look on. He's part of the uh, Mercedes Stars and Cars event. And it was Rosberg that had the lead of some 1.6 seconds, so work to do for Mick Schumacher. And he went about the task with all the enthusiasm and all the driving precision that you would expect from a young superstar on the way in his motorsport career. But Nico Rosberg's experience and uh, superiority, even though he got quite a lot of understeer through that uh, turn, it was always likely that he was going to head towards the uh, timing line and take the victory. And Nico Rosberg did that, defeating Mick Schumacher by 1.8 seconds.
Rosberg celebrates. Schumacher, though, should be very proud of what he did out there on track in Stars and Cars. A celebration of a phenomenal season for Mercedes-Benz. Next up, we change the cars to the GTS. And it's the uh, semi-final of Pascal Wehrlein and Lewis Hamilton, DTM versus Formula One which would be the superior series here in the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Stuttgart. Battling with the oversteer from the rear end of the car. The car's looking and sounding absolutely phenomenal. In excess of 30,000 fans crammed into the stadium to watch these heavyweights at work in this specially constructed track built just for stars and cars and it was Pascal Wehrlein who was leading DTM beating Formula One perhaps not expected but once Pascal Wehrlein had got his nose in front Lewis Hamilton was going to have to do an awful lot of work to claw his way back try as he might, throwing absolutely everything at this GTS car. They rounded the final turn virtually neck and neck. Who was it going to be? And by nine hundredths of a second, it was Pascal Verlein. So Verlein defeating the Formula One champion, Lewis Hamilton. So DTM champion beats F1 champion. And he was pretty happy about it. So you ask my quotes in arm them. Okay, let's embrace him. We need a rematch on the out the stop sides. Okay, afterwards. No, no, we need a rematch in the F1 car. Yeah, that's what I'm calling that. Yeah, that's a bit of a team. Okay, this brings us back to the topic. But first of all, congratulations, Pascal. So you're going to be one of the uh, racers in the final, so you got the better start, and this is why you won the race, this race. So, how did it feel? Well, I think it was much faster when I started, and in the last uh, round, I managed to hit the wall slightly, just a little bit. Uh, I think it was really, really a tight um, race, so I think this was really an exciting race. The next semi-final would once again pitch an F1 star up against a DTM star. It's Nico Rosberg and Daniel Juncker Dea as they go to battle in this semi-final, once again driving these awesome GTS cars. And the action was no less fierce in this semi-final as well. Is it unthinkable to have an all DTM final with no Formula One representation? Well, as this semi-final played out, Daniel Juncker Dea clearly having the drive of his season. Nico Rosberg doing everything he could to keep on terms with Daniel Juncker Dea. But the Spaniard Daniel Juncker Dea from DTM and Nico Rosberg from F1. And Juncker Dea with an advantage of just under seven tenths at the halfway stage in this semi final. Was the unthinkable perhaps going to happen? Were we going to see an all DTM final? Well, the remaining lap was tight. Turn once again, the finish was oh so close, but it did go the way of the DTM star Daniel Juncker Dea by eight tenths, beating Nico Rosberg. Well, he was chuffed to bits with that victory. And it meant, in prospect then, an all-DTM final. Well, Daniel Juncker Dea would be up Well, of course, I'm disappointed Vela. I would have liked to be in the final, but he just drove faster. And I, well, well, did not have the best race of my life. It was really fun, nevertheless. And uh, unfortunately, well, I would have liked to uh, drive the car in the final, but that's just the way it is, and I'm going to watch it. Well, the look of focus. On Daniel Juncker Dea, then. As we reach the final 
of Stars and Cars 2015, driving the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG GT3 cars. The engine note rose, and the cars roared away in battle. So, Pascal Fairlein, the DTM champion, up against Daniel Junkadea, who would be the 2015 Stars and Cars champion. Well, inevitably, Daniel Junkadea was super smooth, and Pascal Wehrlein appeared to be bothered by the rearward uh, loose behavior of his car, as you can see there, as he piled the opposite lock on to try and control the car. Daniel Junkadea smooth and precision seemed to be really, really working. Working to the degree of a one second margin between the two of them. So could Daniel Junkadea beat the DTM champion Pascal Wehrlein? Well, as they rounded uh, to complete another lap, the gap is clear to see that uh, Daniel Junkadea, the Spaniard, was driving a supreme race in this Stars and Cars finale. It got ever so close as they headed towards the final turn, but it was going to be Daniel Junkadea that became the Stars and Cars champion for 2015, defeating the 2015 DTM champion, Pascal Wehrlein. So Daniel Junkadea absolutely chuffed to bits with that. And why not indeed? The youngest ever DTM champion beaten by Daniel Junkadea. DTM uh, competitor in Stars and Cars 2015. It goes the way of the Spaniard, Daniel Junkadea. And he jumps atop the car to celebrate in front of all the fans here in the arena. I would like to congratulate you to your success. I'm really impressed, so congratulations. 2015 has been a phenomenal year for Mercedes-Benz and Stars and Cars proved to be a fitting finale to a great year as all the champions stood atop of the podium. What an event. Bye-bye.